So today I'm going to cover about like the project Flogo, and uh, project Flogo is basically the open. Uh, it's a Go-based open source stacks for the event-driven apps. I'm going to talk about how basically it's basically why it is called as the event-driven one apps. And first of first of all, it's about me. I mean, like I'm a my name is Sahesh Sharma. I'm a solution architect at the city of office at of the Tipco, and this is my email ID. In case you wanna guys send me a any kind of queries later as well, <coughs> you can send me that as well. So, introduction to the Flogo. It's one of the um, innovation lab project we have in our company. So we started with the like uh, going into the like uh, when we we basically what we do is we work on the emerging technologies and we find out if there is something interesting and we work on top of that one. So like for example, um, Java. Java is was a, like a language right initially now people are using the spring framework and all why they use it and all this is something similar to what we have as a flogo so they they provide a lot of functionalities common functionality for you to basically avoid the uh, those kind of a coding you can basically just focus on the business logic so it's a one of the lab project that we have basically created it's built using a golang language and it's a ultra light edge microservice framework even driven app with native support for AWS Lambda function, and it's a hundred percent open source source with zero lock-in, and you can build a smarter edge application using a um, machine learning capabilities as well. So it has a native support for the machine language as well. Why we have chosen the Go language? It's because of the elegance in the simplicity. You guys all already are Go developers, so you know much better. I mean, it's a statically type, zero OS dependency, self-contained binary with no additional libraries required, concurrency, simple and efficiency, concurrency model, garbage collection is much better in the Go, and the speed is fast, which is we needed all for the devices as well. So for all the IoT application we use is this uh, flow Go. No, I said it's an ultralight edge microservices, but how small it is. So if you compare with the Java and the Node.js, Java at the, I mean, like when, when you create a kind of a binary, it basically comes up with the 180 MB minimum size. And uh, when you basically create a Node.js application, it basically come up with the 74 MB. But Flogo is, while comparing with other languages, it's just 10, less than 10 MB in size. Now, how? It is small. That's the question. So, because it reduced the all the kinds of a uh, framework part as well as the VM part. The J JVM is not required over here. That's the reason over here. It's reduced the size of the flow application. Now, let's talk about like why I call this as event-driven app because it's a like a powerful event-driven programming model based on the trigger and the actions. So, we we have a like concepts of like having a triggers as well as actions. So, we uh, triggers are more like whenever you have anything coming from the external source and you wanted to basically take that as an information. So receive data from the external sources are managed by the configuration threading model. So you don't have to basically write a threading to basically handle that one. It will take care by the framework itself. Have a common interface enabling anyone to build a Flogo trigger. So you have a like activities that is already available. You just configure it, it will be done. And handlers are like basically it's used for the dispatching the events to the actions. Actions are more like a, your business logics that you have to write in order to basically execute the uh, functionality. And activities are the just the basic units of frameworks that an action can leverage. Uh, why would I recommend the Flogo? Of course, because of the project Flogo core is open source, modern driven stacks for the IoT and the cloud natives. Flogo Core enables all projects to benefit from the common threading, logging, data type coercion, data mapping, pressing, monitoring hooks, common contribution model, enabling each project capability to leverage hundreds of activities that has been contributed by other developers as well. And we also have a concept of action chaining. Action chaining is more like a, we also have a different projects in the Flogo. So it's not only the uh, for the uh, kind of uh, integrations, we also have a like streaming uh, Flogo streaming, Flogo rules. So it's uh, the way it works is like you don't have to let's say for example when you basically in the previously when you create any kind of IoT applications, right? What you have to do is you have to take the information in the one kind of uh, integration messaging server and then you have to pass it through the broker or messaging server, right? You have to send it to the another kind of uh, streaming engine. But here you can basically we have already all the things. Uh, available for as a projects so you can just put the message to the 
uh, from the trigger and it will be taken care by the framework. It will be transparently, uh, seamlessly, basically send it to the other components if you need to basically aggregate or you wanted to basically combine the information and if you wanted to make a decision real time. So you can do that and it's also extensible. Now these are the different uh, Flogo, uh, Flogo has a different projects also available on its ecosystems. So what is a like Flogo flow, which is more for the like, you can create a, any kind of a integration flow. Flogo rules is for making a decision at the, like, let's say for example, at edge, I need to basically filter out all the information that I'm not really looking. Sometimes the sensor sends the lot of information which is meaningless. If it is a repeated information, I just need to filter out. So that kind of a real time decision I can make using the Flogo rules. And Flogo stream is more like a similar to like uh, processing the information fast in the, so that can be used for any kind of a contextual rules or streaming processing. Is, is, yep. is Flogo a library framework or system? It's a library. Okay. So um, it's a like, um, it's a Go based, again, the library. It's a project, basically. We have like a um, wrapper. It's a wrapper top of the Go. Mm. Now, Flogo Flow. Uh, so Flogo Flow, these are the different projects, like I said, right? The Flogo Flow is a, one of the project which is uh, based on the Golang as well. So ultralight process engine for application integration. You have a conditional uh, control flow. So for example, based on a certain condition, you can create another branch. And you have a powerful step back debugging capabilities in the web browser itself. So it also comes in the two parts. One is a, like um, you can write it everything in the, like, the same way as you Golang or you can use the web browser to basically develop your application. So Flogo Flow Process Engine, what it does is it gives you the managed control flows. Uh, it also manages the state changes, like what you have been also explaining earlier. And conditional branches are optional, but primary always execute. So the, whatever the branches that you have when you create on the based on the condition, it will dip, uh, execute only based on the condition, but the primary always executes for sure. So these are the different options for like developing the Flogo uh, flow. So you can either use the zero code web UI option. So where you can just use the drag and drop option to basically create a, a Flogo application, or you can use the Golang API, or you can also, if you guys don't like, I mean, I'm sure you guys are not like that, but if you guys are not uh, like the command console and all, you can still use the JSON based uh, uh, it's a basically you just write the JSON and it will execute the model for you. It will create the application for you. So you just have to provide what are the packages and all, what business logic you want to basically handle it. That's it. Flogo stream. Flogo stream is a lightweight stream process for the edge devices. It can basically help you to aggregate capabilities, join streams from the multiple event sources or filter out the noises. So you can uh, do the all the aggregation, for example, um, in the like, uh, for example, ATM, like I wanted to check if there is a like um, multiple times that my card has been used, right, in a same day. So that kind of a things, all the kind of a aggregation of the amount that has been used, I can use it on the edge itself. So that kind of a capabilities or joining all the uh, amount that has to be basically in the one day I have a limit for withdrawing a money. So I can basically figure out whether how much amount has been basically. So that kind of a things I can do at the edge itself. Again, the Flogo uh, streams, with Flogo streams, you can group and join events across multiple different streams of the data. You can join ag occurs against pipelines inputs. Pipelines are nothing but just the activities. So you have a, a one pipeline that can send the information. So for example, aggregation pipeline can send the information to the join pipeline. So input is uh, input through the one pipeline will get, give the output and that will be available for the another. It's in a synchronous manner as well. Now, Flogo rules. Flogo rules is more like a, you make a real-time decisions based on the conditions. So you can say that, okay, um, let's say for example, you wanted to create a kind of a campaigns where you basically find out, okay, if uh, male, uh, male basically expend uh, 10K of amount on certain area, then send him a offer. So that kind of a conditions, real-time decision that you can make it on the, using the Flogo rules. And uh, it's again the open source complete extension with the API and the interfaces. Declarative rules, rapid application development, stateful contextual reasoning across time and space. Now, uh, there is also a machine learning capabilities that we have on the Flogo as well. So you can execute the TensorFlow models. 
Now, creating a flow, uh, TensorFlow models is another thing that you can use any other open source. We also have, I mean, from the, I mean, in TIPCO, we also have a, like something called Statistica, which can help us to basically create, we usually create a model on that one. So, which is, again, it's not a like open source, but we have that capability as well to basically uh, create a models on that one. And that can be executed to the, um, uh, using the TensorFlow models, we can execute inside the Flowgo. It has a native support for that as well. 100% open source with zero lock-in. And why ML at the edge? Because there are like a lot of data generation happens. If we, if we talk about the IOTs, right? There are like a lot of data generation happens and data collection exceeds the ability to transport. If you keep on sending that kind of a messages uh, into the like, uh, to the other layers, for example, as a message, it will be huge. So in order to basically filter out that kind of a things, of course, you can use the uh, machine learning at that. So you can just train your model and decide whether what data what kind of a data has to be sent it to the next system. And you need to have intelligent aggregation. You need to decide what kind of a information that has to be aggregate and send it as a single information. So reduce the transfer and the storage cost, a smarter, more efficient network. It can predict also. It can show you the smarter devices actions, less network latency, action resilient to the network connectivity issue. So those are the issues that we basically have usually. The prediction lags if we have a like massive data transfers, connectivity requirements. And uh, what we have next on the Flowgo is we also have a like project meshling, if you guys have noticed that as well. It's a, like one of the open source event driven micro gateways. If you guys are like uh, very much interested into the like blockchain and all, we also have started like exploring as well as we have created another project top of the Flowgo, which is a like uh, open source project Dovetail, open source framework for end to end <coughs> design, development, testing and deployment of blockchain smart contracts. So you can easily create a it's a model driven kind of a pro, uh, model driven kind of a approach where you can create for any kind of a fabrics so at the moment we support a like hyperledger as well as um, corva 3 so we basically support that one and we are still figuring out the other so there are like different ways of like basically communicating to the blockchain network because it has a like its own way of uh, if you need to basically uh, understand all the logic of like different fabrics of the blockchain you have to basically go into the details so we are basically uh, reducing that kind of a, um, that kind of a things for you guys I mean it's easy to basically just write once and deploy it anywhere any of the blockchain fabrics and this is the links for the this is the link for the basically for the project meshling as well as this is the link for the project dovetail and uh, this is one of the most popular uh, project that we have. Flogger has the most popular open source integration project that has been basically, if you look at the graphs and all, it has been like project contribution, 100 plus con project contribution were there. 650 plus open source extensions has been contributed on this project. And uh, this is the link for the Flogo. If you guys want to basically start doing something, it's open source. You can just go into the HTTP Flogo.io and uh, this is the GitHub link for that one. I can just you show you. Walk us through some hello world code. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be more interesting to me. Yeah, sure. Just give me a second. Anshad. So first of all, I just wanted to walk you through the website. So oh, maybe you just <coughs> see. Yeah, this is the website that we have also for the like uh, flogo.io. And if you guys just go into the below. Oh, sorry, can you go there? It's not still visible. Just share it. Uh, it's extended screen. OK. Yeah, go to the logo. Okay, so this is a like a uh, web UI that comes out of the likes out of the. I mean, when we have created this project, so this has come as a like a screen. You can basically create a new app, which you can choose either, either a like devices or the microservices. If you wanted to create just a microservice, just How go. Is app running? <coughs> you have to compile Docker image. Docker image. 
if you go to logo dot io, mm -hmm. uh, you can show my command line also. Yeah. It's open. So if you say try at logo now, so this is the Docker command. You just run it, and it will give you where uh, this UI. So that is. was actually the motivation to my question. So Flowgrow is a system, not a library, because you've got an application actually running now. Um. No, this is just a like uh, behind the scene. Of course, you. I mean, uh, it's not really a Apple system basically because when I say it's not a, we have done this way is like for making easy for you guys. But you also have option from the command line where you can. You don't need to run it every time on the Docker. This is just a one case. You can also do it on the command line. So like you do it in so the Go line. Can you yes. link it into your application? Sorry. Can you link it into your application? Sorry, I didn't understand. Link. 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 It's a library, right? So yes. Link. Yes, so yes, yes. Yes, yes. The similar to what... So you can go get something. Exactly. Yes, yeah. yes, we can do that. This one is, like you said, right? I think you presented one of the slides. Mm -hmm. There are three ways you can build your app. This one is more the GUI method. GUI method. The other one is command line. And the third one is uh, by using the JSON. DS, yeah, so yeah, behind yeah. the scene, this will also create a JSON. So if you want to link, you can directly go get the library. That's one way if you are native and want it to be native to your Go apps. This is more of a visual way. Uh, okay. Again, an open source UI. Uh, what it does is it basically, basically the app that you create, it compiles or uh, a translation layer which writes down to the library. And still, if you want, you don't want to use the UI, it's fine. You just go use the library directly. So it actually generates a JSON DSL. Yes. yes. And, and which the application reads it and mm -hmm. executes. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, what you ask also, right? I mean, we can of course import all the kind of uh, packages that is for the Flowgo, as a like Flowgo flow as a one of the uh, project, as a like so it's a library. So it's just basically import into your Go language, and you can just make use of it. That's also possible. So I do sometimes. I mean, like I sometimes like write only the Go language uh, application, and I just import it like those packages. That's it. I start with that. I do that first. So you can show also the like. Um, the console way, I mean, like all the libraries that we have on the tipco.org, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to take? Yeah, yeah. that's also. So this is the uh, GitHub, go inside the GitHub. Out here, uh, you can see if you see some of the samples, it directly gets the library and it has been built on top of that. Publishing. Publishing. Maybe we have one for Raspberry Pi. So that's a bunch of JSON. Yeah. Yep. Can we see an example where you actually import the library from? Sure. Uh, just go to the command line and. Just give me a second. I'm just directing to the yeah. mic.
This is just a simple hello world. So this is just a, like when I create a like a simple hello world example. So this is how it basically. So you can just take a, the, that library as a GitHub, Tipco software, Flogo lib, core activities. So this is core is a like main things, main engine for the all the new projects. So it has a like shared kind of a things for the other projects as well. So this is like the structure that's automatically gets created. I just have to write a business logic on that one. That's it. I can just start writing the business logic inside the function. So you have two methods, metadata and eval. What do they do? Sorry, I mean, I'm not that. Yeah, over here, I just write the business uh, logic over here. So I'm not that kind of a developer, but yeah, I mean, I usually use the more what we have as an existing functionality over here. So yes, so all the things has been taken care by the framework for us. What is the entry point here? Is something come to your system or does it come from? Uh, sorry, you mean to like uh, for the... Uh, Let's say you say uh, there is a message coming. Mm -hmm. How does the message come to your function? Okay, so we can just write it over here as, a, as, as well as like from, we can write a trigger. There's a one way is a like I showed you, right, that there is a trigger and the action, right? So I can write the trigger, which can basically send via any kind of a communication to the, or triggers, channel. Triggers yes, triggers exactly. Trigger handlers will be there to basically pass that event to the action. So and where is your funk main? Sorry? Main Over here is a like, the, here we are, I can write just the like, uh, kind of, a, so I have this contextual activity, right? So I can get the kind of a, a data all from here. Um, Context or something. No, is there a main function somewhere in the system, or is it hidden? Um, main function for like invoking the. No, it's not here. It's not here. Yet. It's entry point question. The entry point. That's what I'm saying. So uh, usually, uh, if there's an entry point of this class, then yes, it is hidden over here. It's basically only the main action is like over here, where I can just write the business logic. So framework. Not yes. Library. Yes. Framework. Yes. That's what. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> It's a framework, yes. And uh, I think, yeah. Let me just show you other thing as well. So, if I just go to this hello world, right? So, I have option over here, like creating any kind of uh, activity over here. So, I can just go to this one and I can, this is just a log one activity. I can just go back and I can here, I can just choose any of the things activity. So parser. So the output of, uh, the output of this is a single binary, static binary? Yes, one app is a one s library, yes. I mean one the app. The output of this configuration yes. is a static binary? Yes, uh, one library. One, one library, right. I mean one binary, right, for everything. I mean like either you create a, of Flogo uh, Flow. You can target Windows. Yes, and everything. So Flogo Flow, Flogo Stream, Flogo Rules, everything can join together, create a one binary file, binary. executable, yes. And <laughs> it will have no dependency on the other libraries. It will all be, everything will be here. On. And everything less than 10 MB as well. Yes, so that's the one. So this is all aggregated functions. Everything is there, You if you need to basically uh, use the Amazon SNS 
and the couch base connector also it has oh. like these are like everything has been like uh, contributed by even publishing a message to the kafka everything connectors are there so you can use any of these things to basically Mongo yes rest service whatever it is uh, yes invoke rest service you can invoke the rest service web socket I message <laughs> um let me make it a bigger size than i think over here so over here see global cache reply to trigger return aggregate is global attributes update to aws device shadow all these are like we have a like contributed by developers only like this is a open source community again control gpio what is that sorry there's there's one uh, item called control gpio i haven't used it yet yeah how how does it know the hardware target let's Around see the GPI configuration yes control raspberry oh okay but it could be uh it could be something else it could be an addition or yeah you can see this uh, like what is the i mean the activity has the inputs and all so up direct down off directions input output methods right. so these are the and you also have this actions uh like um you have the functions also over here so you can just use those functions to basically uh use the easy methods to basically drag and drop that's it and this is like all like open source the best part of that Uh, I think I just so want to show. What is the source of all these uh, modules? Come from GPIO or Parse? I'll show you that. This is this is oh here. No, this is the yes. I mean, this is a Tipco repository only, but it's again the open source everything. <laughs> so if you go to this uh, Tipco software Git IO, GitHub dot IO Flogo Showcase over here is everything. See. Then how do I write my own? Sorry? How would I write my own? So okay. it's a step is also given in the Flogo IO dot. Uh, if you go to the website, right? It's uh, like it's it will give you the step by step to basically start it. So you can just uh, go through the steps. What are the uh, <coughs> go get that command you have to execute to basically get the uh, Flogo libraries, and then you can get it, and then you can start with the just writing a Flogo uh, activity first that you have to create. So that will give you the kind of a framework and then just start writing your business logic inside that particular thing and then you can uh create a like install right like a go install is there right that you can use for creating a kind of a binary that will just import it as a so if you see over here also option is there uh you wanted to basically go for a new install new activity so you can just use that one to basically provide your link your github link and that's it it will basically automatically add this one over here as well so i create anything i just put it into the github and just put it over here as a like url i can just add that one new one even if there is a something on the showcase right i can just add it from here so i just say uh, let's say if something is not there download file right so view on the this one i can just go this one um <coughs> Yes. Is there like a commercial offering tied into Flogo, and what is it the difference between the open source and the commercial? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, there are. There is a. So basically, sorry, I think it has not able to find it. So uh, of course, there's an enterprise versions also available for this one. But um, most of the things what you have in the uh, in the like enterprise version, we are making it everything as open source. So even this UI, right? It is available in the like open source as well. And most of the uh, features which we, which is actually present in the like only in the like enterprise version we are all trying to basically bring it in the for the open source version as well so it's like uh, connectors everything is there already uh, but still it is not visible at the moment but we are able to basically we are what's, what's the difference between the enterprise um the support, support i think that's the one thing support as, uh, support and more connectors 
more connectors that's what so the those connectors also we are okay, trying to bring yes 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 How do you generate the binary, the final output binary? So uh, for this one, uh, from the so plogo, there's an option over here as well. There's a button called run flow. But you want to yes, that's for just for the testing if you wanted to do whether the update thing has been. So again, um, I think. So if you want to install the binary in some target platform. Correct. Uh, that's also option is there, I think. Export. Yes. Ah. Export. And you can actually create for any kind of a is machine. Like for Raspberry Pi is there, and it's ARM. Um, no free BSD. Oh, free BSD is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Darwin 64, Windows 64. No Windows 32. So, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, all the lightweight platforms are gone. Yeah, I mean, that's what we have. So, legacy apps maybe we'll have. This is JSON format. Is it common like a unit testing, whatever testing, integration testing framework? Yet, yes, it is. That's what. So, sorry. Yes, you can basically do that. I mean, let me just go to the project. So over here is a like testing and debugging. You can basically mm -hmm. open this one, and you can put any input over here, and see whether what is the output coming for each and every activity as well. And when you run it through the flow, it will give you the actual output. So it tests mm -hmm. through the everything, yes. Export those tests as well to put it into your Git repo? I haven't tried that one, yeah, but I can get back to you on that one if you need that as information. It's there, right? It's there, right? You can put a test case and then include in your DevOps pipeline. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question or something? Uh, what was Mashling? Ah, uh, yes. Let me just show you. It's a micro gateway. Uh. Mashling. This is a project Mashling. We have started uh, like a few months back or something, I think. This is again the on the Flogo side. We have created on top of Flogo. So it's a micro gateway, event driven micro gateway. What if you is a micro gateway? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 more like a when you're basically working on the IoT projects and all, right? There's a gateway that can basically, uh, it's a very lightweight kind of a gateway. Basically, there are like uh, st stages, right, uh, from the device to basically get the information to the um, what you call it as a like fog or anything, right? So that's where it between states, right? So it's just give a kind of a like no information back. I mean, to the next level. So it's a kind of a uh, policy, you can basically put the policy or all those kind of a connections and all that kind of a thing. Why would I use that over, say, just calling a Lambda function? Maybe yes. I mean, there's another function, of course, you can do that, yes. I mean, you don't have to, that is a like serverless kind of uh, architecture, right? That you so will what's be. the benefits of using this? Process? So, um, does it have a device shadow, for example? I have not really. For example, I'm sure uh, you have the answer. Your IoT device is intermittently connected to the internet. Mm -hmm. Your gateway does it shadow the device? Uh, you mean like multiple, like like Your a shadow as in when it's not connected and you think you believe the device is on mm -hmm. or off, right? So mm -hmm. the gateway is always online, right? Because it's connected, correct? But the device may be offline, correct? So it has to basically notify that kind so of. So it needs a synchronized state okay. between the device and the. the uh, so you have. This is not more of a hardware, right? Again, it's it's. Uh, uh, lightweight library that will set either on the IoT device or your gateway. So what you are saying is, uh, of course, when the device is offline, uh, someone talks about storage, right? Mm -hmm. So if the connectivity is not there, it is meant for those scenarios wherein you can, instead of sending every microsecond kind of transaction to, let's say, AWS Lambda, maybe you want to perform some aggregation or some filtering at the edge itself. So this will provide you with those functionalities and uh, when the connectivity is up, it will connect with Lambda and publish the aggregate. Yeah, I think the question is about meshing. What does it do? What is? 
but it it again as you said right and now it has been merged into the logo umbrella but it was meant to be uh, an gateway kind of a feature not the hardware but software kind of feature wherein it does this uh, device shadowing wherein it collects aggregates and publishes to serverless or any other framework when it's up. <coughs> but if you are looking at logo right now all the capabilities we have started so as you can see right i think it has connections with mqtt pas http so all has been merged into uh, the logo umbrella what's going on what's meshery meshery is a like uh, you, you want to talk about that Mashri machine? Is, uh, it's our uh, API gateway. So if, okay. you, if you know the API platforms, then uh, Mashri was the first API gateway. So if you, if you have heard of PG and all. Yeah, PG is uh, another one from the Go one of Google, so right? It publishes so. to the API gateway when, when let's say, the internet uh, connectivity is bad, right? So it's on the server. Right? It's just a connector to Mashri. So likewise, it has many so connections. So Istio is the Kubernetes style Istio, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not some other Istio. <laughs> <laughs> the service mesh. <clears throat> so it's essentially a, a system to target IoT edge devices. Mm -hmm. That's right. Another thing also we have like I mentioned to you right like the project of Dell also which is top on the it's again top of on the Flogo so we, we we started exploring like the blockchain applications as well and uh, we thought of like making a something which is a like model driven kind of a uh, smart contracts for the all the kind of a blockchain uh, ledgers so basically fabrics and all so basically we use the hyperledger at the moment we suppose that one hyper support a uh, hyperledger as well as the corba 3 so those corba corba 3 corba. yes cob cobra right a cobra r3 c o b r a 3 cobra. Cobra. No, cobra. No, what cobra. is a cobra right corda sorry corda r3 corda r3 yes corda r3 yes so corda r3 <laughs> also we uh, we are able to basically support those two kind of a fabrics for the blockchain and uh, it's just a model driven so basically you just create a smart contract for once and you can deploy to any kind of a like um, the at the target is like any kind of a blockchain fabric you'll be able to use it so you don't have to basically uh, just stick with one kind of a because in same company itself right there are like many departments are there they can have a like different kind of a like blockchain way of implementing right so you can just write once a logic and you can use it anywhere else so this is the link for that one as well so the deployment is a binary a static binary yes that static binary can be packaged up into a computer <coughs> yes and managed using container kubernetes and yes correct and yes it is possible so if the binary dies or the executable dies, mm -hmm. it's Kubernetes responsibility or to yes. whoever to restart it. Yes, that's right. So where's state managed? Um, Connectors to <laughs> databases? Yes, we have a like, we have a like... Is state managed locally as well? Is state we have a like uh, caching option also for the like using the like connectors that we have, like the couch based connectors and all. So that is the way we basically do. If you're talking about only for the internal states of the application, that is basically, uh, I'm not sure what they are using it internally in the framework, but they use it, I mean, like for the caching they does, yes. As a like similar way, what we have as a go routines, right? We send it as a like, before that you can create a kind of a arrays or you can just cache it, that kind of a way is there. So local databases are not supported? Uh, local database is like. Uh, in other words, if I want to deploy on the in, onto an edge device, mm -hmm. Raspberry Pi, for example. Right. Can you write to a local file? Local file, uh, just the application or what? Like uh, you want to. I got my logo application running. Mm -hmm. Right. Maintain state. Let's mm -hmm. say it's collecting all the or whatever. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of sending off to a gateway, can you write it? Yes, I can do that. I have a connector for that as well. Yes. To a local file. Yes. So that's those those are the connectors that I can basically use it for like 
or uh, writing into either of the d new types of database like for example all not all the dbs like even we suppose like uh, most of the dbs but we basically go for the like latest uh, mysql and all of those things because they are like uh, lightweight and all postgres but postgres exactly embedded database actually which one sorry oh i have not checked that one bold db uh, do we have a yeah i think so we are running out of time already <laughs> yeah so um there will be one meet will be i'll be creating a new meetup on wednesday um, for the for the opt speaker so if you guys are interested we'll be creating one maybe tomorrow and then it will be for wednesday so if you guys are free you can drop by um thanks to tipco for providing the venue and food and thanks to engineers.sg for a kind of talk Yeah, I'd like to stay back and chat with him more about Togo. Yeah, please, <laughs> please feel free. Yeah.